Hello, 911. Yes, we're having a... Uh, how is it getting going? Okay, what address are you at, sir? Yes. 911 outages, one during Tropical Storm Hillary, another just a month ago, and a third this week on Monday are just the most recent. An I-Team investigation finds just what's being blamed and the solutions to fix it in the future. News Channel 3 I-Team investigator Jeff Stahl has spent months now digging into these 911 outages. Well, we know that in an emergency, you can call 911 for help. You might even take it for granted. But as the past several months have demonstrated repeatedly now, despite high tech emergency dispatch facilities, our 911 lifeline for help in the Coachella Valley is vulnerable. 911, what's the address of the emergency? The, the water is up to the, up to the waist already, and we have patients there. The only thing holding me back from washing away is a uh, billboard sign. Desperate calls for help as Tropical Storm Hillary raged. Are you able to get somewhere that's the higher ground and leave the car behind if you need to? We cannot, no. The water's too swift. We're, we're floating in the car, but we're tied to a tree. Making matters worse, valleywide 911 lines were down, except for the CHP and Sheriff's Department. And they were able to route our 911 calls to our business lines. Although we lost 911 capability, we never lost our business line. But if, if, if we got out, we'd be swept away. Okay. Cathedral City okay. Police Chief George Crumb says the outage was traced to a failed fiber optic cable line near the railroad tracks in Gene Autry Trail in Palm Springs. It's where a freight train had derailed in floodwaters during the storm. Hardest hit residents took their complaints to Cathedral City's City Council after the storm. We called 911, no response. I called community care licensing from Riverside, no response. I called fire department, no response. I asked Cathedral City Police about that, and they said that they had to prioritize the overwhelming number of calls they were getting by urgency, so immediate help was not available for everyone. Would the, the caller on the phone have known that they were not getting directly through to 911? Most likely not. It would have been an uninterrupted service by simply having a transfer completed from Riverside Sheriff's or CHP to our business line directly. And Chief Crum there says his dispatch staff absolutely delivered, answering nearly 1,400 calls for service, 240% of normal in a 60-hour period. They frankly pulled off a miracle, and we did not lose any service to our residents uh, or businesses during that 60-hour time frame. Other cities were also down and had to adapt, Indio included. The question is, what caused it? What can we do better? We're working on that now. Indio police reported no significant issues in providing services during the storm, despite the 911 outage and calls being rerouted. The November 8th and 9th outage, it was different. It impacted all Valley calls to 911. And our reporting has uncovered it was not an act of nature, but theft. I asked the sheriff's department, who confirmed to the I-team, fiber optic cables were reported stolen from an area near the Whitewater Rest Area. There are no suspects. In a statement telling us we are committed to thoroughly investigating the stolen fiber optic cables and acknowledging the significance of this incident as it is not a common occurrence. But Cathedral City Police say there was also a second fiber optic cable theft at roughly the same time, just south of Desert Hot Springs. The two line cuts preventing the rerouting of emergency calls to other agencies. And Frontier, the company that owns the fiber optic lines that were cut last month, answered our questions about the recent outages in the Coachella Valley. A rep there telling us cable theft vandalism remains to be a major reason for outages across the state that are up 100% year over year. There are solutions in the works. And that's something I think as a region we need to work on is making sure that we're not reliant on one line that can be cut in a storm or in a construction accident or anything. In the November outage, the two local line cuts prevented the rerouting of calls to other agencies. That's why we shared backup emergency numbers with our viewers. Everybody's familiar. If I have an emergency, I call 911. 
But if 911 is not down, it's important for the residents to know what is the number that they can call to get their local police and fire dispatch office. Officials say part of you being prepared for a potential outage could involve your cell phone. You take a business card and you tuck it between the phone and the case with important numbers on it. The actual numbers, not just the auto dials. I, I did have I did have some questions from them that we responded to. Cathedral City's city manager telling News Channel 3 he answered questions for a grand jury investigating the recent outages. The courts would not confirm that grand jury case. Outside of the ongoing investigations into what happened, there are plans to avoid this again. There's always more that can be done, and that's what we look at after this happens as we sit down as supervisors uh, with California officials to figure out what more we can do in the future to prevent this from happening. For the shared goal of getting help where it's needed most as quickly as possible. I think at the end of the day, we're concerned about all of that. We just want them to work. That, that's the number one priority. For the I-Team, Jeff Stahl, News Channel 3. Frontier is offering a $5,000 reward for information to help solve some of these crimes, and the company is installing alarms that alert them when cables are cut. The company also working with security for air tags and cameras on cables that are hit repeatedly. As for Monday's outage in India, a Frontier rep tells us that the, uh, a third party caused damage to its lines while doing road maintenance. If you have a tip for the I-Team, email us or call the number on the screen if you'd like to share.